Hello everyone, this is Eric from Etiquette for another English teacher live stream. Um, welcome to everyone joining. I'm sure we're going to have a nice chat today. If you're there, just put your name in the comments, uh, say hello, say where you're from. And um, already we have our first viewer, Bonnie Esther. It's a pleasure to have you. Good morning from Marlboro, Massachusetts. USA. At, at some point, Bonnie Esther, I'm going to be able to say Massachusetts more fluently. I always struggle with it, but I think every time I read it, I'll get better. Uh, so welcome, Bonnie Esther. How are you doing? How was your week? Guys, uh, if you're here, just uh, say hello in the comments. Say where you're from. Um, actually, before the live stream started, I had this by BB. BB said, awesome teacher. Um, they asked me, Eric, where are you from? You sound British. And I said, no, actually, I'm from South Africa, as you all know. And then they're like, but you look like you're like a Russian. And then I said, I'll take that as a compliment. OK, so uh, everyone, if you're here from Facebook or from YouTube or a couple of people from Twitch, uh, yeah, welcome. Uh, here on this channel, we talk about teaching or teaching English usually. So if you have any questions or if you would like to share any experiences, put it in the comments below. And here we go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> why do you get all the... <laughs> uh, BB, why? You know, uh, I was just doing so well today and now you've got to tell me I'm looking older. Well, actually, I got a haircut. What do you guys think? I prefer my hair shorter. Uh, thanks, Bibi. Uh, Visa, hello. Visa, where are you from? And then loser Ang. Um, firstly, happy Teacher's Day to all. Yes, today is Teacher's Day for many countries. Um, I, I was actually looking up Teacher's Day, and there are a few special days for teachers. I think International Teacher's Day because I'm planning on making a video for it in a couple of months, in a couple of months. Um, so International Teachers Day, World Teachers Day is October 5th, but many other places have Teachers Day today. Uh, my favorite teacher, thank you, BB, I appreciate it. Kezia, hi Kezia, how are you doing? I finally spoke to Kezia for a little bit, so I haven't spoken to her in a while. Uh, nice haircut, thank you Kezia, you know I like it this way. I just need to get more wax. Um, I can't do the long hair for a long time anymore. Namrata, hi Namrata, how are you today? Mrs. Abiola, how are you doing? Uh, I was talking to some friends, uh, to some friends on Friday, and we started planning our trip to France in 2023, if it's possible, because the Rugby World Cup will be in um, France at that time. So we're just talking about, you know, throwing around some ideas. Visa, how can we work out in English speaking, the English speaking capability of our students? This is a good question that came up, Visa. So usually you can do a test on your own where you can ask them some questions and kind of rate them where you think they should be. I think um, as a teacher over some time, you get used to, to quickly uh, determining what level your students are at. But there are some websites. Actually, today I was uh, I'm, I'm preparing a video on 20 websites for uh, English teachers to use. And I was going through a website called something else. And uh, I think it's something for teens, international ESL teens or something. And uh, on many of these websites, they have tests that if you can get your students to do it, they can do it on their own. But I, I think as a teacher, you should try and do it. By the way, guys, just uh, say hello in the comments. And also, what are you up to today? How was your Sunday? Q King, greetings. Happy Teacher's Day, Eric. Okay, so I think it's, um, I was looking it up, um, World Teacher's Day around the world, because World Teacher's Day is October 5th, but many countries have different days. So let's say, um, international around the world. Let, let me quickly see which countries it is today um, around the world. Okay, which countries celebrate Teachers' Day and then list of Teachers' Day. I was actually looking this up. Um, so many countries uh, are October 5th. And today, what is today? It's May 16th. Wow, okay, October. May 15th is also Colombia. Uh, let's see, where else is it? And this is Teacher's Day. What am I looking at? Oh, 16 May, Malaysia. Okay, this is um, because, so in Malaysia, it's 16 May. Mexico, it's 15 May. Oh, I should have made a video early about it then. Uh, most are October, I feel, but um, many countries have different dates. South Korea, it's also 
uh, 15 May. Oh, I missed the message. No, none of my students messaged me. I must be a horrible teacher. No one said, said Eric, thank you for doing a good job. I think I'm going to send them a message now. Me, like, crying face emoticon. Why didn't you send me a message? Okay, Fiza from Pakistan. How are you, dear? I am doing great. Uh, I'm doing very well, except I just realized I miss Teacher's Day in Korea. Um, I miss, I miss, right now I teach university students and they're fine. But, you know, as university students, they don't care too much about their teachers. When I was teaching elementary school, we would have, you know, the parents would send you gifts and the kids would make you cards. It's very sweet. So I, I also want to do a video for teachers on Teacher's Day. And I think I missed that. BB, I love your accent, but speak a little bit slower because we are native English speakers. Uh, right. BB, usually in my videos, I speak a lot slower so that most of the teachers can understand. But when I talk to you guys on the live chat, I tend to get very excited and speak very quickly. So I apologize for that. I still hope you can enjoy it. Elixir School, hello there. How do you do your videos? Um, uh, how do you do your videos help me a lot in my teaching? Uh, Elixir, I'm so happy to hear that. I've got a bunch of videos I'm still planning on doing that I hope can help teachers. Um, you know, I'm, I'm constantly just writing scripts and writing videos, but I think pretty soon, you know, what I would like to do is I just want to make a better background and then do a lot more fun videos on teacher stories and interesting news for teachers. I would love to do something like that, especially if it's like topical information or if there are good articles or videos out there that I think teachers might enjoy. I want to do a lot of videos on that. Uh, but that will have to come in the future after I've made all these other ones. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm going very slow. I see it's already um, three minutes past 10. Uh, Gisela, hi. Hello. Here it's uh, 1st of June. Okay. So that's when Teacher's Day is there. Good. That will be nice. Su Yun. Ah, Su Yun. Su Yun Park. Hi, Su Yun. I think uh, Su Yun, uh, it's her birthday very soon. So, Jan, uh, I hope you have a lovely day. And, um, yeah, um, when it's your birthday, you have to celebrate very well. Let's see. Katty. Hello, Eric. Good morning from Argentina. You look good. Thank you, Katty. Um, I, I did a video with Katty, I think, two weeks ago where I um, did an interview with her. It was a lot of fun. And then we posted it for, for uh, her channel or, or the group that she runs, which is called... Um, chat box. It's on Facebook. I promoted it here on the channel last week and many of the viewers joined and it was such a good experience because, you know, I think it's such a, it's, it's a great community where people can go and practice their English. So, Cathy, um, thank you so much for that. And also, um, they try to promote a charity called Pencils of Promise where, they, where they're going to build a school in Laos. And I think that the goal was to get $35,000 to build the to build the school. And they, they already achieved $50,000. Cathy, to you and the whole group, I, I want to say congratulations. And we're so proud of you. I think you did a fantastic job. Uh, oh, sorry. I was here. I should have clicked on Cathy. There we go, Cathy. Uh, you look good. Thank you. Mrs. Abiela to meet you in France. I will definitely come and see you uh, to meet you in France, Mrs. Abiela. Ping, happy vacation to all the students and teachers all over the world. Hi, Eric, how are you? I wasn't able to join last Sunday because we are busy preparing for the last week of this academic year. Wow, Ping, already? Um, our academic semester ends end of uh, in, in June. So I've got two maybe a month and a half of school left and then i'm on vacation so i'm looking forward to that but i do have some bad news um so recently at the place where i work there was another corona uh, incident so somebody picked that up so now all my classes will move to online again but you guys know i love teaching online it's not a problem for me and my students also know that so i'll, I'll be fine uh bb would you mind speaking? Uh, this is what you said. Uh, sorry, Bibi. Uh, I think in my in my normal videos, I go a little bit slower. But here I get too excited, especially when I see Natalia. Natalia, how are you doing? Hi. 
Um, Natalia, uh, how is, you've got a daughter, right? How is your daughter doing? And um, uh, I, I hope you're having a nice Sunday. I always say I'm so grateful for Natalia. She's uh, very active on Facebook. She, she shares all these funny videos or interesting information for teachers. And now she's also on chat box on Facebook to practice. Natalia, I, I think it'll be great to have you there. And here's my dad. Hello, everyone. A cold and rainy day in the Cape. Yes, my dad is actually, he's helping me with some of the work I'm trying to do. I've got all these projects, so he's helping me out a little bit. I'm very grateful for that. Ping, happy, happy International Teachers Day. Here in Mongolia, we celebrated in October. Yeah, Ping, I think in most countries it's in October, but you know what? I think teachers should be appreciated all the whole year long, right? All year round. Uh, Bonnie Esther, Teachers are tired after this challenging year. They, they are happy. They have learned so many new skills this year. They realize they have not met all the needs of their students. Well, I think it's, I think it's um, you know, just by practicing and learning all these new skills, teachers have improved. You know, when when things first start, we, we kind of we kind of doubt ourselves. We think, you know what, this is new information, it's gonna be too tough. Uh, no one's going to learn, but then we realize no one's out, no one else is going to do it. So we we better pick up these skills. We better practice. And even though we don't achieve all the things that our students need, I think we're just going to improve. You know, and um, I feel it's the same way. Last year started with online, and I feel like okay, I can do online. And then this year I had to do hybrid, where I teach online and in class at the same time. So I, I feel, and also you learn other skills by being challenged like this. So I think we're, we're much better teachers for this and we can only improve in the future. But that doesn't mean that, you know, we, we, shouldn't, um, we, we shouldn't learn from these challenges and that it wasn't difficult, you know. I think, um, uh, teachers, uh, I think teachers deserve more appreciation for all the things that they've been through and for everything they've done. Um, let's see, what is next? Pal, new haircut. You look more handsome. Hi, everyone. Pal, thank you so much. I thought it's impossible to look more handsome, but ah, the haircut did it. <laughs> no, I'm uh, I'm doing well. Um, I think this last week, um, summer's around the corner, but it started raining. I think it's going to rain a bit around here. So I'm going to use that time and try and work on a few things, especially now that I've got to teach online. I'm just going to stay at home. So maybe I can make a lot more videos for you guys. Luciana, good morning from Brazil. Hi, Luciana. Sorry, guys, I'm running a little bit late, I see. Luza Ang, um, I, was, I, I was watching some UFC, and one of the fighters, the main fighter from Brazil won. Uh, yeah, he, uh, that was so nice to, to see. He really, he really enjoyed it. Luza Ang, is fine. Uh, that force who is listening test, how much can they understand when listening to a native speaker? In other words, helps educate the hearing. Yeah, um, actually, um, you know, uh, we've got to listen to all different uh, to all different types of English and dialects, and and so it's important for us to practice in all these different ways, even for our students to listen to to different teachers. So, uh, for uh, for example, I re I remember um, I went on a trip a couple of, a couple of weeks ago with another friend, another teacher. And we went to this random um, cafe and I went to, or, or was it a random convenience store where my friend and I, we bought a coffee. And um, I, I stood at the at the counter and a, and a girl walked in and she she spots me and she walks in. This is a this hundred is kilometers away from where I live or 200 kilometers. And, and this random girl walks up to me, she looks at me and she smiles and I and I smile back and I'm like, OK, maybe I should know the student. And she bows and she says, hi, Eric. It's uh, whatever her name was. And I said, um, how do I know you? And she how do you know my name's Eric? And she said, well, last year you taught me online. I have never seen her. I don't know what she looks like, um, uh, apart from maybe I saw her once or twice because during tests. I tell them to switch on their cams, but I, I didn't recognize her and she was one of my students. And so I was talking to her and uh, asking her about her, where she lived, what she was doing. And she was actually working. She was coming in for her shift at that uh, convenience store. And then the other professor, he has a he has a very heavy English accent and he started talking to her. 
and but uh, you know sometimes it's difficult to understand if it's it's a very heavy accent but and and she she looked at him and she looked at me and i said no this is practice go ahead a answer his question and she she was shocked for a second and then she waited and he repeated and she answered him and i was kind of proud because she she probably only listened to me during that year you know during that semester so she got used to my ac accent but I, I wanted her to practice with this other professor to to listen to his accent and to answer him so um just going through that experience learning she improved her listening too i don't know it's a, it's a it's a story but thank you for listening to it definitely we should try different things bb um, please give this amazing teacher lots of thumbs up. Thank you so much, BB. I truly appreciate it. And Elsa, hello, teachers of the world. Hi, Elsa. How are you doing? It's always a pleasure to see you. And Suyon says, ah, thank you. <laughs> okay, Suyon. Uh, uh, and then Elsa, a lot of thumbs up. She was listening to you, BB. Um, Fisa. Eric, uh, please release a video for classroom management. I watched your previous video, but please make another one. Actually, I'm facing a problem due to some problem uh, creating students of my class. Okay, so Fiza, um, which video did you see? Did you see the long video or the short video? Let me give you my long video. And I'm actually, I'm preparing one more classroom management video that I'd like to do soon. Um, let me just go to my channel. I'll find it for you quickly. Uh, did you watch the one on the secret of classroom management? Secrets of classroom management. That's a very long video I did. It's about 31 minutes long. It's very long, but I think it has a lot of good tips on how to become a better teacher. But I am planning a video that I will shoot soon. I'm just going to put this in the comments, I am planning a video to shoot very soon that will be also about classroom management. But I feel like uh, some of the teachers have said, Eric, it sounds like you're so strict with your students. Um, you know, how can you create a better atmosphere with them? So in this next video, I will give you a tip about how to actually, um, you know, be nicer to your students and how to get them to kind of listen to you. So I'm going to make one very shortly but check out this long one if you haven't yet i hope it has some the charity was fifty thousand. thank you yes katty you guys did an amazing job we're so proud of you my first korean parent gift was a pair of carved ducks one boy and one girl to put either facing each other when they get along or facing away when not oh so you got some some mallets right some some uh, some wooden ducks oh that's really nice my first korean parent gift yeah, parents also give gifts. Um, I like, what do I usually get from students? Well, obviously chocolates, uh, flowers are nice, cards. Um, when I was living in South Africa, I got some great presents from parents. Uh, a, a lot of, a lot of um, dried meat, <laughs> which I consumed very quickly. And uh, yeah, so uh, I really enjoyed that. Um, please also assist us on how to earn online as an ESL teacher. Okay, yeah, Alexa School, I'll look into it. I've I've tried to make a lot of videos to give tips to teachers, um, both online and in class. Um, also, you know, a lot of activities. I've got some more activity videos coming out too um, on how to m earn money. Uh, perhaps in the future, I'm not, I know there are many websites on how to earn money, but a lot of them don't pay very well. So I'll look into it, but right now I'm not too concerned about, um, you know, about earning money. I'll, I'll rather help those teachers because I think there are some resources out there. There are some companies, but maybe in the future, I'll, I'll think about it. Sorry, guys. Usually I put water into my trusty Starbucks, um, uh, but uh, today I've just got my normal water bottle. Um, let's see, Natalia um it it's raining cats and dogs here in the west of ukraine yeah it's it's also raining really nicely today at first it was kind of soft and now it's very hard but so thankful for the rain i always see it as a sign that um summer is almost here i really enjoy it ravi hi ravi how are you doing welcome so much to the live stream if you have any questions guys if you have any questions if you have anything you want to talk about 
please put it in the comments below and I'll try to answer it. Um, and Diamond says here, hi, bro, what's happening? Hi, sir, I like your English grammar accent and teaching. Thank you so much, Diamond. I'm just uh, talking if you have any questions or if you'd like to share some experiences in the comments below. Okay, Natalia, my daughter is doing great. She's watching cartoons right now. Thanks for asking. Well, actually, I was um, I was doing some research on websites that can help teachers, and I found some really good websites where they've got uh, nice, um, uh, you know, songs and cartoons and things for students to learn from. I'll definitely share that in that video. And then we've got Gugu's Baby Pigeon World. Gugu, uh, speaking activities for adults in one-on-one -on -one class. Please suggest some interesting activities. Wow. Gugu, that's a really good idea. Actually, a long time ago, I thought about, okay, um, I should I should put out a video for tutors, so people teaching one-on-one. -on -one. And I never really got, uh, got to it. One-on-one -on -one teaching. Okay, I'll, I'll look into it because I've been meaning to make a video like that for a long time and I never got to it. So I'll try to get there. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get there in the future. Some interesting activities. For now, Gugu, I've got a lot of um, activities. I've got uh, I've got a, a playlist of 50 games that you can play perhaps with your students. Uh, I've, I've got so many speaking activities also in a lot of my videos. If you just go to the ESL activities, so many ideas in there. And I'm making another video. This next video that I, I actually, I prepared the script yesterday is 10 summer activities, 10 summer activities. Let me quickly look up what was one of those summer activities. I finished the script yesterday. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, the one was about five senses. So you, this, you put the students in pairs, you tell them to walk outside and to write down all the things they see, hear, smell. So th th that's a good thing that you can do. Uh, another one, I found a good one. What is it? Uh, mm -hmm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, I had so many ideas for that. Uh, random scavenger hunt. Oh, I had some other ideas too, but uh, just look through that. I had some other ideas. Can't think of them right now, Gugu, but I'll get to them soon. Bibi, are you so severe with your students, Eric? Um, no, I'm not. I, I think I'm very lenient, actually. Uh, compared to other teachers, I'm very I'm very lenient to my students. I'm, I, I believe I'm very kind. Some of my old students might, might contradict me and say, no, Eric is truly horrible. When I first started teaching, I taught at a very difficult school where there was a complete lack of discipline. And after that experience, I remember I went into teaching. I was very strict and I, I was I, I was very strict. And then over time, as I got more experience and especially with the students I'm working with now, I don't really need to to be that strict. I do need to motivate them. Or if, um, you know, if they don't do the work, if they don't practice hard, then I give them a lecture. I'm very quick on it. So I think, you know, I, I do think I do believe. I'm very lenient, but sometimes you do need to, to light a fire underneath your students and you've got to reprimand them if they do something wrong. Of course, if they make a mistake, I want to give them an opportunity to correct that mistake in the future. But overall, I would say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually too nice to them, I think. Um, Semilas, thanks for your recommendations. Guys, remember to like the video. Thank you so much, Semilas. Yes, guys, if you if you would be so kind, please like the videos. Um, remember, when you watch a video, try and watch it uh, all the way through. When you watch it all the way through and you give it a like, it's really good for the algorithm. But I understand if you guys are busy. Um, and then, Ping, I'm, I am excited to check out your videos for high school online activities. I want to share with you the good news. I will be teaching grade 9 and 10 next act academic year. I'm so excited for the new challenge. Ping, I am so happy for you. Congratulations. I'm so happy to hear that. Do you guys remember she said she was going to go for some interviews and I said, please let us know. Ping, we are all so excited for you. Um, uh, high school online activities. I think I've put out some, some ideas for online activities. Most of the... The, the games that I put out, they can be used with um, online or offline because you just put them into groups and you give them tasks. 
Um, yeah, I'll definitely put out some more activity videos that you can use for that. And there are many videos I did on online games. Let me quickly look here. Uh, where is that online game one? Online. I think, um, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did a lot of videos on online games. Uh, games. Let's see. Where is that? Yeah, I think the best one here is 10 fantastic ESL games, and it's all with Bamboozle. I really like this video and the series. I'm going to put out the, I'm probably going to make that video on 20 websites to use for, for ESL teachers. I'll probably shoot it next week and put it out two weeks later, two or three weeks later, I believe. But this video is one I did on Bamboozle, which is fantastic. If you haven't seen it yet, Ping. Nora. I'm teaching the topic of environmental problems to my sixth grade students. I'm going to use storytelling, reading aloud, and Kahoot. Do you have any advice? Mm, yes. Um, when it comes to environmental problems, the students have done it a lot. So, you know, they're going to be able to say what the problems are and um, uh, perhaps ways that they can deal with it. I've seen some great lesson plans on it uh, as well. So, somebody else sent me a lesson plan on it. And I think the, the, the students know about environmental problems. Uh, what you should do, however, is also to get them to, to share their ideas or how they can use their own lives to improve the environment. Or, uh, you know, you can use some role play in your class too. Or where they can explain to somebody else about how to save the environment. Yes, um, I, I would say environmental problems. Um, yeah, also try and get them to, sh to show some examples from the news. If you can use some really in that lesson, that would be great. You know, articles from the news or what's happening in the world today. You know, I think that's very important, Nora. Um, and I think it's a it's a good topic. You know, I think it's important. Nobody wants the, the, the world to, you, we all care about the environment. We want to leave a healthy um, world for our kids. So I think, yeah, it's, it's a very important topic. Luza Ang, while I was teaching in Malaysia, the gifts on Teacher's Day were mainly small tokens of, of appreciation from the parents and handmade cards from the kids. See, that is very well appreciated. In Korea, they actually have a new rule. They've got a new law. It started maybe six years ago. Uh, it's It's got a name too. I forgot what the name is. If anybody can help me, what is the Korean name for that law? So in Korean law, in the past, uh, Korean parents really care about their students' education and parents would give gifts to the teachers. However, a couple of years ago, parents would give very large and expensive gifts uh, to influence the teachers. So there was a law that was passed to stop um, parents from giving gifts to teachers. So now whenever a, a parent gives a gift to a teacher, it has to be below $30. I always tell my students, guys, I'm ready to be bribed. Just bring me, bring me that, um, bring me that carrot cake <laughs> and we, we can make a deal. We can make something happen. Disclaimer, I'm just joking. I'm, I don't accept bribes. Wink, wink. Uh, disclaimer, the wink was also a joke. <laughs> Natalia, thank you so much for uh, letting me know about the chat box group. I already love it. People there are so lovely. I hope it's a wonderful opportunity for me to improve my English. Natalia, definitely. You know, uh, they have lots of Zoom meetings where they have interesting conversations and chats. And, and the thing is, you know, I've seen many communities like that. And over time, you know, maybe people start getting bored or, you know, something happens in the group. But I found with this chat box group, they're very friendly. Everyone is so supportive. So that's why anytime Katty asks me, Eric, can you do something for the group? I'm like, I'll try. Because even though I'm kind of busy, you know, I, I, I really support what they're doing. And if a lot of um, uh, our community here on Etiquette go to chat box, I just think it's so nice for everyone to chat. Please share that website. I need songs. Okay, let me quickly see. I'm actually, I'm busy with it right now. Which one is it? I was writing it down. Um, and then, uh, oh wait, is it this one? No, Games to Learn English. No, which one was it? I was looking through it. Was it Dream English? Oh yeah, there are two. There are two. The first one is one of the biggest channels. It's actually a channel on on uh, on YouTube too. It's got 30 million subscribers. It's called Super Simple Songs. 
So that's got some songs that you can use. It's also got a, a, a YouTube channel that you can check out. The other one is actually this one guy, and he makes great songs too. It's called dreamenglish.com. Uh, the thing is with YouTube, the thing I always worried about is, you know, whether whether it's appropriate for students, because sometimes you go on YouTube and you want to find a funny video and something pops up on the screen and you're like, no, kids, don't look, um, you know, so uh, th they are working on it. Like you've got YouTube kids that is specifically for kids. But I think with these websites, it's safer because you go to the websites, they've got the or they've got the video, they've got some questions, they've got some worksheets, and that's great. So I'm going to share these 20 websites. Uh, I just put it in the chat. And Nora says, I need some. Sorry, guys, I'm going to drink some more water quickly. I just, uh, I made dinner for myself today. And those of you who know me know I'm not a great cook, so I'm trying to learn. And today I just made some patties and I made myself these mini burgers, which were okay, but very salty. So now I'm, I'm thirsty. I bar hi, the translation is on point. Excellent. Yeah, I think so. Guys, if you're watching on Facebook, because this is on YouTube and Facebook, uh, uh, Facebook does automatic uh, automatically transcribes it. So you've got the translation down there. So if you are listening to this on Facebook, then you will have the, uh, the option to have it transcribed underneath. Um, teachers rule in the US. Nice. The teacher's rule of thumb in the US. Don't smile until Christmas, right? Not true, but good to tell new teachers. You can't get a firm back uh, after too loose at the beginning. You know, um, uh, Bonnie Esther, I've been thinking about this a lot too, and I, I usually tell new teachers this too. Uh, when you start, don't smile. You, or, or, well, it's it's not about smiling, but it's your attitude that you ra you'd rather be very strict at the start, and then you can kind of soften as the year goes on, and you know where you stand with the students. Um, because a lot of teachers, they start with the kids, and the kids are so nice and kind, and then the students start taking advantage. They start acting out. And then uh, I think I actually said it in this video that I'm that I just shared about um, the the secret of classroom management is they take advantage and then it's really difficult to get them back on track. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's better to be stricter from the start. Alexa School, do share some interesting tips to engage and gain the attention of our students in the first day of teaching ESL. Okay, uh, this is so info important. One of my most popular videos I shot almost more than two years ago. It's one of my most popular videos, and you have to understand that hope I've I've improved with the way that I speak on camera, but this was one of my first videos, and I was so awkward on here, but I think I, I gave some good information. It's called the first day of class as a teacher, and and uh, I think it's a, it's a good video. A lot of it still counts, but uh, I, I'm very awkward on it, just so that you know. But uh, as a teacher, the first day of class, I've kind of changed the way that I, that I approach things. And I'll tell you about it now. I'm just going to share this video. This is uh, called the, the first days of class. And this is how to teach the very first day. Um, now, let me tell you about my procedure when I start class. I start class. I wait for the students to come in. I pause. Uh, wait for them, smile, and then I greet them. I give them all the class rules. I tell them who I am, what to expect, and I tell them the, the couple of rules. I also go, uh, I ask them to think of a couple of questions they want to ask me. They can ask me at the end of class. And then what I do is I go through what we're going to do that semester. I'm going to tell them the, the schedule um, and all the assignments that we will do. So I go through all of that while I have their attention. Then after that, we're going to do a, a play a warm up game. Uh, I've played games like M and M. Uh, uh, the M and M game is really fun. Is it M? Yeah, it, it is M and M. So you get a small packet of M and Ms for, and you put the students into small groups. You give them a packet of M and Ms, and if they pick a blue M and M, they talk about their family. If they pick a yellow one, they they talk about their hobby. So they close their eyes, they pick an M and M, uh, M and M, and then for one minute they have to talk about that certain topic. Uh, for each different color. I used to do that, 
but then M&Ms are getting expensive, so I don't want to do that anymore. So now what I do is very simple. Uh, I don't know the students. The students don't know me. The students probably don't know each other either in, in my university classes. So now all I do, I tell the students, hi, hi, guys, I want you to quickly interview your partner. I want you to interview them, and I want you to find out some interesting information about them. So and write it down on a paper. Very simple instruction, because now the students are asking each other questions and they're getting to know each other. And it's much easier for instead of them doing a self introduction to ask questions of their partner and they're getting to know each other and they write it down. And I, and I make sure to walk around and tell them, find out something interesting about your partner. Then once they are done. I tell them. OK, I want you to introduce your partner to the class and for the students, it's so much. Uh, but I tell them uh, you have to make it very positive and kind. You want your partner to look amazing. So you have to do a good job and be very positive about who your partner is. Almost like, you know, if you're a hype man, a lot of rappers have this hype man that comes out introducing the best rapper of them all oh, put your hands together so well not like that but you understand i want them to have a great experience and then they introduce their partner and it's also good for them to practice his name is he likes because a lot of students they are so used to talking from uh, about their own experiences you know i am i like so when they talk about their partners it takes a lot of pressure off of them because they're talking about their friend um, and because there are too many students in class, you can't do all of them. What I usually do is, um, let's say there are eight groups of two each, eight pairs. I tell them rocks is a paper and the loser will introduce their partner. So let's say the loser introduces their partner. The partner just sits there and like uh, waits until it's done. And then I ask them a simple question. Oh, what's your favorite? Or I can ask him something about what I heard in the, the introduction. And then I ask them a question and then I say, OK, well, now I've asked you a question. Now you can ask me one of your questions. And the questions I always get is like, oh, Eric, how old are you? Are you married? Um, what's your favorite food? And I've, I've heard all these questions a million times. so I've all, always got some kind of answer. So and then after that, uh, yeah, I, I just re remind the students of the rules, what I want and um, give them some basic information. I ask them, is everybody happy? Is everybody good? And then I send them on their way. And um, yeah, that's usually what happens the very first day of ESL. Sorry, guys, I went on for a long rant there. Um, yeah, is that OK? Um, what do you guys think about that? Uh, where are you from in South Africa, Eric? Actually, I was born in Central South Africa. Mm, uh, not many people will know it unless you're from South Africa, but it's uh, close to Johannesburg. Mm. Maury, do you think using Skype app is useful in teaching students or Zoom is better? Um, Zoom or Skype both are fine if you're only teaching one student. But if you're teaching a group of students, Zoom is better hands down. I prefer Zoom over Skype because I feel it's smoother. It's easier to use. And also the tools, the, 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 the sharing. Uh, well, both have the same tools except for breakout rooms. But um, I, I just feel Zoom is much better personally. And uh, yeah, I mean, Skype, you know, they had the monopoly. They could do anything. But because they were so lazy, they didn't have any competition, they got too lazy. And then Sky, um, Zoom just found all the features that people wanted and they are doing so well. Sagittarius, good evening from my side. Sagittarius, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, Kim Young, um, Kim, Kim Young Lun. Um, law, I think. Thank you so much, Suhan. I knew it would be useful to have you here. I really appreciate it. Uh, Katty, thank you for your kind words about a small community. Katty, your community will be very big very soon. Um, Bamboozle is a great website, Nora said. Right, Nora? Mm, Sagittarius, we had to give some gifts to teachers very often. Um, uh, when I was young. If not, we didn't get any attention from the teachers in my country, especially in government schools. Um, wow. Yeah, that, that's one way of getting attention through a bribe. Uh, yeah, no, I think hopefully teachers these days are more professional and they care about their students instead of receiving gifts, I hope. Um, I think, 
Hmm. I think, but but still, this week when I talk to my students tomorrow, when I talk to my students online, I'm going to I'm going to be very upset with them. Not really. I'm just going to be fake upset. I'm going to be like, oh guys, you know what? I'm so sad. Saturday was Teachers' Day. Nobody sent me a message. Nobody sent me a Eric. Thank you for teaching me. Yeah, no, I think I need to quit. It's all because of you guys. I make them feel bad for a second and then uh, give them extra homework. I think that's what I'm. Yeah, I tell them something like, yeah, for next week, I want you to to find some reasons. What did you learn in my class so far this semester? I like that idea. I'm going to do that. Always mess with your students if you have a chance. Uh, well, not always. Um, I mean, they need to learn sometimes, but every now and again, just to keep things interesting for yourself. Um, I joined the chat box. They offer online activities as well. The last one I couldn't join because I was in class at that moment. Loser on, it's fine. Whenever you have a chance, please join chat box, guys. If you want to practice or just uh, talk to other people, they've got such nice people there. Uh, I really like uh, Cathy's group. Uh, thanks. I hope you will make it next time. <laughs> I'll definitely try, Cathy. Parveen, hello, and Aid Murabak from Bangladesh. Hi, Parveen. Yes, to um, to uh, all my viewers out there that celebrate uh, Aid Murabak, uh, guys. I hope you have a um, it, it, it. You really enjoyed it, and it um, it it worked for you. What do I want to say? Um, anyway, uh, happy Aid Murabak. Uh, I wish I made food for you as a gift. Sagittarius, I would really appreciate it. But last week I went to the gym. I was eating very poorly. I didn't go to the gym as often as I wanted. And I stepped on the scale and I was like, okay, all these snacking and drinks has to end. I need to go to the gym more often because I, I gained some weight. And I was trying to lose weight for summer. And I'm just like, oh, Eric, not good. Because mo most of my friends know I eat whatever I want to eat, but at least I go to the gym and I drink lots of water. I try not to drink too much, but sometimes I drink more than I should. Well, well just with health, not about going overboard. You guys understand what I mean. Um, and um, so anyway, so I think for the next couple of weeks, I need to watch out for eating too many snacks and staying away from sweets. But as soon as I, I reach my, my goal weight, I will definitely ask, ask you to make me some food. Uh, Kathy, uh, Eric, you know, I'm, uh, I'm always grateful. You're so supportive. I was wondering, what's your opinion about children taking international English tests? Is it a positive? Um, well, yeah, I think... I, I think it's a necessary evil, uh, not not a necessary evil, but it's it's a necessary difficulty, because these students they've they've got to perform according to in international standards. So if you've got an international test, you know that all students have to go through it, especially if these students want to travel for studies or if they want to get a job in the future. I think it's a good way to see where they are at, because you know classes are different. Um, uh, Countries are different. So if you have international English tests, maybe that's a, that's a standardized way of testing the students. But those tests are very difficult. I can tell you that. And they also don't accurately show what the student is capable of because most of those tests, um, we have some students in Korea that are amazing at those tests. They, they get taught how to answer the grammar questions or how to answer some of these um, you know, the multiple choice questions or, you know, the, to search for the answers. But then when it comes to actually having a conversation in English or listening or anything like that, then they, they really struggle. So I think the tests are necessary, but they might not be accurate for all types of English. Um, th th yeah, that's kind of what I think about it. Um, Natalia, you look so fresh and full of energy today. And I think you will be a good dad because of all your work with children. Natalia, thank you so much. I think that's the kindest compliments I've received today. Um, I, um, yeah, I hope to be a dad in the future, but we don't know. Well, I'm going to have to get lucky somehow and uh, find someone to put up with my, with my eating and my hair cutting habits. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. I couldn't. I couldn't think of what habits I really had that that were really bad. What bad bad habits do I have? I'm sure I've got some bad habits, um, but not too bad, I, I guess. 
Um, Nora, can you give me some advice to teach irregular verbs? Uh, yeah, irregular verbs, I think, well, hmm. I've taught, I've taught so many irregular verbs. Well, you know, obviously you're going to give the students some examples. The only uh, with these irregular verbs because they're all different, you're going to have to go through all the different forms with your students, right? And you want you want to give them an opportunity to practice those with your students too, for them to to just get used to them and to learn them. Because unfortunately, with irregular verbs, they are irregular. They can only be taught. And then the students can remember to use it by repetition. So, um, yeah, I can't give you like any activities that I that from the top of my head. Just know that with irregular verbs, eat, ate, you know, and um, uh, some of the other ones. Oh, see, saw, you know. Um, uh, so those they need to practice uh, practice it to get used to. It. Nora, I'll think about it some more. That's a good question. It's a bit on the spot. I can't think of any good activities at the moment. Uh, Mori, thank you for your help. I like your work always. And I have uh, another question, please. Can I use the student's mother tongue to teach them grammar lessons or explain to them in English language will be better? Uh, Mori, very good question. I actually, I made, uh, many teachers have asked me that question and I made a video on that um, about L1. Actually, I made it, I think, what is it? A couple of weeks ago. And my opinion is that if it, if uh, you can quickly explain the grammar, uh, do uh, use as much English as possible. But if it is difficult for the students to understand, or if it would be quicker, and you know what it uh, what it is in that language, just quickly explain it in their mother tongue. But the idea is uh, don't use too much because the students will take advantage of that. Uh, here's a video that I made on using L1 in the classroom. I think that answers about uh, what I feel about it. Um, here, my dad says, for all the students, yes, it motivates them to study and take their English to another level. But here, my dad is talking about the international test, right? Oi Nam, hi, good morning, teacher. Where are you, Oi Nam? That it's morning where you are. Are you? Uh, you're probably in South America somewhere then. Um, uh, ZB, thank you for sharing. Thanks a lot, ZB. How to keep five-year-old kids focused online? Make it fun for them. Play games. Ask them about what they're doing. Use colorful objects. Use props. Um, you know, play games with them. I made some videos and I shared it before on how to use bamboozle and games on there. Get them to move around. I actually, this is one of my more popular videos. I made a, a, a video about how to teach uh, younger learners online. I think it's one of my more popular videos. I'm going to share this here. Sorry for dropping all the links, everyone. It's just um, when some a, a lot of people haven't seen these videos, so it's easy uh, for me to say, oh, just watch this video. And then I, I don't have to explain everything and they get a better idea of what I mean. So um, that's why I make these videos. You know, I've got all these ideas of videos that I want to make in the future. But first, I need to answer all these questions that always come up. So as soon as I've made this library of questions that I can answer, like um, what I'm doing now is active summer activities or websites or what are the other ones? How to teach one on one. Um, uh, and then so all these questions that get asked as soon as I've finished making the videos for that, then I can start doing some other things. So ZB, just watch this video. I think it's got some good answers for you. Uh, which is the most acceptable English teacher certificate in the world? Um, I think there are so many companies that offer TEFL or TESOL certificates. Uh, just find one that is uh, don't find one that's too expensive. Just uh, find one that's accredited. That means that it's accepted in your country or the country you want to teach at. And uh, you can also look up some reviews online, make sure that it's in good standing. And then pick one that isn't too expensive when you're searching for those certificates. Abdul, hi, good to see you again. I see you said it here. How are you doing, good sir? Yajaira, good morning. I almost missed you. I was wondering where you were. Um, my night doesn't feel complete unless I say your name. And the same for Abila Shah. Guys, I really enjoy your names. You know that. Yajaira and Abila Shah. I'm so much better since you two joined. Muhammad, how can I hide stammering problem while teaching? 
Um, yeah, I, I guess with stammering, you can say sometimes I also stammer. You're going to want to work through it. And what I would do at the start, if if it if it is a natural thing for you, if you know you've practiced a lot, just go to your students at the start of class. You know, tell them, listen, guys, I've got this problem. I want to fix it, so I'm going to stammer a bit. Uh, please just wait for me to continue. And then once you once you know that they understand your problem and that you're working on it, then it's just a case of you practicing your speaking, practicing some uh, phrases, or you know, just uh, try and get better in front of class. Hi, you were missed. Uh, you're talking about. Uh, I bet you're talking about Yajaira and Abila Shah, right, Dad? Um, okay, let's see. Mr. Mario, hola, Eric, teacher. I was late, but I came. Mario, I'm so happy to have you. Mohammed, uh, oh, that's the question you asked before. Padho, hi, sir. Hi, Padho. How are you doing? Mario, how about you? How are you doing? You were having some problems at school. Is it getting better now? Um, Padho, your videos are always awesome. Thank you so much. Padho, if you have any videos that you would like to see in the future, please let me know. Shaq's boy. Hi, thank you for responding. How to get ideas for essays and speaking um, like elites or speaking advanced? Yeah, th that's going to be, I, I guess, try topical issues. So issues that are concerned uh, that are uh, that are concerning the students that they are thinking about that might be interesting to them. It could be also in the news or things in their country. It could also be a uh, debate topic so they can pick a side and then give their opinion on it uh, for the essay or speaking. Because if you can find a topic that the students are very passionate about, it's easier for them to prepare for essays and doing debates or speaking about it. So Shaq's, uh, Shaq's boss, yeah, I guess just make it relevant to your students and also try and get them to pick a side on something. That usually helps. Luza, I use the same idea when I teach new words. Try to explain the irregular verb using synonyms in English first. Then lastly, if I still can't understand, use the mother tongue translation. Very good, that really helps. Thanks, Marty, I will try next time. Okay, guys, we've almost come to the end of today's live stream. Did everyone have a good time? Um, yeah, what was I going to say? Um, hmm. Okay, so I've got a couple of videos. I think the video this Tuesday is one of the videos I took from another live stream, one of the answers from there. And then this week, um, I'm just going to teach online. I'm going to work on some scripts. Next weekend, I will shoot the scripts. And then, um, yeah, I, I will put out next week, we'll do another live stream. And I'll ask you which one of the videos you want to see first, and we'll put that out. Yeah, if you have any last words, you can put them now. I think I drank some coffee a little bit earlier, so I'm probably going to be away. I'm going to drink more water. I'm very thirsty. It's getting very, getting very hot around here. Yeah, just another week, guys. And uh I just want to say thank you so much for joining the live stream. Uh, I really enjoyed chatting to you all. I hope you have a wonderful week. And uh, yeah, I think we can stop it there unless anybody has any questions. Yeah. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining. Um, I hope you have a wonderful week. Happy Teacher's Day to all of you out there that celebrated today or yesterday. Um, I will see you. Oh, here are some people saying this. My dad says there is no replacement for genuine enthusiasm. Uh, the love to love to share is a hallmark of every good teacher. Natalia, wish you all the best. You too. Luza Ang, thanks, Katty. I will try next time. Bonnie Esther, thank you. And nice to meet all of you teachers. Yes, Mr. Mario, Natalia, bye. Bonnie Esther, ciao to everyone. Iris, what do you think? Uh, uh, what do you do when you realize you explain the question wrong to students? Stop. So the students, guys, sorry, I made a mistake and then just fix it. The students understand it as teachers. We are not. We also make mistakes. No one's perfect. Just stop. Say, guys, stop. Erase that from your minds. I made a mistake and then redo it. Uh, Shirika, great to be here. Lucianha, thank you. Mori, thank you so much. Pao, thank you for your help. Hugs from Ecuador. Great week. Uh, ZB, uh, I think we're going to go out now. The signal went bad. Can hardly hear you. Oh, sorry to hear that, loser. Um. Amir, thanks. Ping, thanks for the great Eric effort. Ping, anytime for you. Good luck with your new classes. I hope 
to bring out some videos that can be useful to you. How to keep a five-year-old focused. ZB, check out, I posted a video about how to teach uh, young students online, how to teach online. And I've got lots of games that you can use with them too. Iris, okay. Okay, everyone, this is Eric from Etiquette, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.